Hi, I'm Dave Turner, the Executive Vice President of ENCO Systems. And today I'd like to talk to you about Hotshot. ENCO's Hotshot product was designed to create large numbers of random access keys for operators to play live bumpers, uh, sound effects, and various things that they need to find very quickly but have a large array of them. Um, the Hotshot 3 product that we're, is our current offering has uh, an interesting layout to allow the operator to not only have the random access playback of a large array of buttons, but it also has the ability to sort of organize things within that array to make uh, things that are somewhat scripted flow a little more quickly. If you take a look at the screen, the top row of buttons up here um, are the page buttons. This system uses a two different page number and allows you to have from zero to 99 uh, pages. And each of the pages contain this area of hotkeys, which is uh, 50 buttons. So um, you have quite a few buttons here, 50 times 100. So um, 5,000 cuts that you can place into this thing and be organized uh, for an operator to um, access. So the way that this works is each one of these buttons is a hotkey, and I can select it. But that presets it onto the large buttons down here. These large buttons along the bottom of the screen here allow me to have very large buttons to use with a touch screen so that I can play via the touch screen. And you also may notice that I have a keypad here. This keypad has a button layout that is exactly the same as what's on the interface up here. And so it allows me to operate my entire show just from this one little keypad sitting on my audio console. Um, so if I wanted to move through this page, you know, I could manually select a button and preset it here. But the beauty of this interface is it's designed with the next and previous buttons here, or these two buttons down here, that I can sequence through the hotkeys. So if I press next, you'll see how the gray square moves along here. And you also see how the highlight button on the keypad moves along here. So by using any of the methods, touchscreen, mouse, or keypad, I can select the element I want and play that and stop that. And this just keeps wrapping down the page. So as I, you know, if I, if I want to go down to a, a lower uh, element here and skip around, I can then move back and forth from that element. So it's very easy for the operator to use. And with the banks, 99 banks, um, they might get a little confusing with just a number. So we've provided the ability to, on any bank, you can go into the configuration file and you can type in here. I'm going to put Dave's bank in here. And then when I exit this, you'll see it says Dave's bank. So now if I step to another bank that's not named, I come back to Dave's bank, there's Dave's bank. And you can have quite a few letters defining what that bank is. So you can get uh, pretty descriptive. Oftentimes this is used in a multi-segmented show and so the elements that might be in one segment are laid out in order of how the operator thinks they're going to happen. So he can very easily, even in a dark control room with this nice backlit um, key panel, he can step through each of them um, and play them in succession. But he also has the ability at any time to play something out of order, just select a different button and play that directly. Um, so then the next segment might have a different bank number. And so if you do a show that uh, might be done out of order, where the segments aren't produced in order, or they might be produced whenever things are available. So the operator can then just you know, say, or if, if we're going to do a certain segment, I go to that segment number on the page, and I'm uh, set and ready to go. So um, the operation is pretty straightforward, and that basically does it. You have the big buttons here that you know, not only um, can run from this keypad, but there are various options that let you remote these to other buttons if you wanted to do something from your console directly. Um, the other thing that uh, you know, I showed the bank buttons here and let you step through these banks. But if you wanted to go like from 1 to bank 44, I can just type 44 on my keypad here, and then it'll go right to bank 44. If I want to go back to bank 101, and it goes back to bank 1. If I want to go to a single digit bank like bank 3, I can just hit the 3, and after a second, it'll time out and go to bank 3. So go back to bank 1 and talk a little bit more about uh, the system. I showed you in the config file how 
you can give the banks names. But there's other functions in here. Um, one of particular interest is the profile. All of the buttons that I program in this um, might be important to me and might be something that I need to use on a, you know, a once a week kind of basis. So I can take the collection of all the pages and everything I've programmed on those pages and save that in a profile that allows me to go back after um, a certain amount of time and load that profile up and be able to use it again. And um, this is also useful uh, if you network these together. These are fully ne networkable and um, all the data can be shared between them and you can have profiles so that I may have done a production in you know, Studio A, but now I'm gonna do the same production in Studio C. I can go to Studio C and load up my profile and then I have all the different uh, um, buttons that I programmed previously for that. You'll also see down here there's a, a section where you're able to change the output channel assignment. Um, our Hotshot products can support multiple output channels. Generally, four is the, the sweet spot. And uh, so if you wanted to lay these out so that um, adjacent things are on different channels so that, you know, you can do crossfades on the audio console, then, you know, you just rearrange the, the programming of what channel the uh, output is sent to, and you're able to do that very, very easily. So that's pretty straightforward. The next question is, how do I get things into the system and utilize them? Well, um, there's... Uh, numerous ways and one of the easiest is um, somebody runs in and has a USB drive that's got something on it that you need to get on the air right away. Well you see on the interface here there's a green button and it I've got a USB drive plugged into the unit and it's telling me I got a four gig drive in there. If I click on this button it gives me a directory of what's on the drive and I have some audio files in here and uh, let me get to a page um, where I've got some space so I'm going to go bank down to zero, 00, there's nothing on this page. And uh, within my audio files now, I'm going to find a audio file in here and I can drag it directly onto a button. And what that has done is not only put it on the button so that it is available for me to play instantly, but it has also made a copy of that and inserted it into my library so that I can utilize all my sorting and searching and library maintenance functions to find that again for future reference if I ever want to use it on another page. Here's another audio file, this time an MP3. I drag it directly onto the button and you saw that little loading going on. During that loading, it was converting that file to WAV for use within the system because that's what I've got the, uh, the default file format set to. So now this file is available for playback. Very easy to get things into the system. There's also the possibility to drag things into the library if you're working in sort of a library management mode. The button on the user interface that pulls up our library here gives you access to all of its power. Um, uh, there's large groups of organization available here with these tabs. The tabs are categories that um, also show up in this list. So I can select a category by that list, or I can go to um, any of these tabs. I don't have much categorized on this machine. But uh, so you're able to, um, you know, search in here. If I want to some, sign something with uh, Sky, if I want to find Sky, here's a couple things with Sky, Mr. Blue Sky. And then I can drag that directly onto a button and I can play that button. It's also possible to audition it in the library. This has playback features. It also has edit capability so that if I want to um, go in here and set up my heads and tails, I, you know, I can zoom out to see more of the cut. I can set a head. I can go to the end. I can set a tail and save that. And now that's how that element will play the next time it's played. This is particularly useful on those MP3s. If I go back to um, this, uh, where did I put it? Oh, I put it on zero. If I go back to this page, and this was the MP3, if I right click, I can directly go to the editor on this. And as you can see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. This is not really edited very well. Um, my heads and tails are, are not where I want them to be. I could manually set these and save it, but we also have a quick set function in here. So if I right click on this button 
and I go to trim, it will automatically set those features or set the head and tail. So if I look at the editor now, um, you see this one got moved out and I can change this level. I got it set for minus 35. I can set it to whatever level I want to automatically trim that cut to. So it's very easy to instantly trim something up. Let's see what this looks like with an edit. That's, a, that's tone, so I mean it's nothing interesting to see there. Anyways, it can be really handy when somebody just gives you something quickly and you throw it in the system and you don't have time to even open it up and edit it. You just hit the trim button, it automatically sets the head and tail to the, uh, to the levels that you set. So, um, the library also has a, a number of other features in here. Every one of these columns can be sorted. So if you want to find the shortest thing in the library, I can click on length and it's the shortest. Uh, I click on length again, I get the longest. So lots of power in here in the library to find things. And also there are multiple libraries available. You can set up as many different libraries, each of which hold 100,000 cuts. So there's a lot of material you can put in here and organize. And these search functions and the grouping functions work across all the libraries. So it's very, very powerful. Um, so that's... Uh, you know, how the operator interfaces with the system, how the library is set up that you can put things into the system, and then how you can get them on the buttons and organize them to um, be used. Uh, so that's pretty much what uh, a user would do with this system. But there's also the ability to control this remotely. So you could have um, a video production system or a master control switcher something that uh, um, needs to have audio inserted along with the uh, control that it feeds it. We can be slave to various device devices like that, and we can also um, connect to various things to trigger this system. For instance, these big four buttons across the bottom here uh, can be remoted to buttons on your console so that you could uh, play elements just like you can on this keypad directly from the uh, console. So that's pretty much it for Hotshot. A lot of flexibility, a lot of buttons, a lot of audio, and a very powerful uh, database to allow you to organize and, and find these things and place them in the proper places for you to use. If you have more questions, take a look at our website at www.enco.com or give us a call at 1-800-ENCOSYS. For Enco Systems, I'm Dave Turner. Thanks for watching.